<laughs> hey, Brian, thanks for joining us on the show today. I got to love you guys' antics. Oh, wow. <laughs> <laughs> we have a good time. We have a good time. Oh, um, I love it. Population purge could not be better timed. <laughs> yes. A lot oh. of dark things, a lot of dark things happening in the world. The, the concept behind this population purge. Uh, I don't want to go into a lot of detail, but it does involve a world pandemic of a sorts and clean blood and infected blood and the commerce surrounding the sort of black market surrounding clean blood. Right. Uh, so tell us about the story for population purge. Well, the whole premise actually started um, as a teaser. We, we were trying to get a teaser put together to do a feature film. It was originally going to be like just, uh, you know, raise the money for a, the, from the teaser, of course. And, uh, you know, my wife and I just said, uh, you know, let's just put up the money ourselves, you know. And uh, obviously, low budget film. I mean, we couldn't put up a lot, but I put up enough because in order to bring at least a visual impact, if nothing else, because, you know, I've spent, I've spent 30 plus years as a cinematographer in the business, but uh, this was my first feature film. And of course that's a huge undertaking, uh, even for a low budget film. But I went out there on the premise of uh, finding all the possible ginormous backdrops that I could possibly get up, you know, get a hold of. And um, everyone bent over backwards for me. And, and as we kept going, I kept picking up more locations and more locations. I'm like, oh my God, this is going to turn in. This is going to be epic. So, um, and that's kind of how it got started. And the, whole, the pandemic sort of, uh, that was in the back of our minds as well. But I didn't want to do a pandemic movie. You know, uh, it's been done. So I was wanting to do something a little bit different, bring some, just, you know, dystopian uh, setting to it, that kind of thing. Something well, I got to ask you about I got to ask you about that. The setting is weird because it's <laughs> like, the, I mean, the sets and everything, the locations, right. it reminds me of parts of LA now. Yeah. I'm not, not right. joking. <laughs> I'm not joking. It looks like LA parts of LA, like run down garbage everywhere. Right. Like it's like, it, it's like you predicted what LA downtown LA would become. Sure. Well, I lived in Burbank years and years ago, back in the 80s <laughs> when I, I was out there for uh, some time working out there and living in Burbank. So, yeah, I, I, I get it. I, I get it. I mean, it was starting to crumble then. <laughs> yeah, it's sad. So when I'm watching your film, it's like, oh, did you just use locations in L.A.? I mean, I know you didn't. Right, but, right. Um, yeah. Yeah, yeah, no, it's uh, very on the nose with that stuff. And, yeah, the, the pandemic stuff is sort of uh, in the background. Right. The story. Sure. It's not, it's part of it, but a lot of movies do that. You're not making some political statement, you know, right. it's sure. there. Yeah. I want to make yeah. sure I didn't, you know, didn't get into that arena. You know, I just wanted to yeah. kind of you know, kind of make it very neutral and have fun doing it. You know, make it kind of a fun out of the box, uh, crazy mental uh, characters, that kind of thing. Now, uh, how did you, you say you and your wife put up the money? Yeah. Like that's a bold, not a Kickstarter, <laughs> not an investors. They're like, eh, let's make a movie. Right. Why, what do I need this money for? Which exactly. You know, exactly. <laughs> well, so, yeah, well, I'm I'm fortunate to um, do very well in the business as a cinematographer, and uh, so that keeps me. That's and also I have a couple of corporate clients. That's you know it keeps me keeps food on the table too. So um, I just saved enough. You know, a few pennies and said, Hey, let's do this. And, you know, fortunately I owned a lot of the, I own a lot of the equipment, you know, all the, a lot of the grip and, and, and a lot of the logistics was already taken care of from the, uh, I guess from the technical end of it. It's so already had all that. It was just bring together a few guys who wanted to have some fun and just throw a little script together and see what becomes of it, you know? And of course I wish I'd had more money because, you know, there's so many, there's, you look at your film and, you know, I edited the film and I'm sitting there pulling my hair out the whole time thinking, oh, if I'd have had a little more money here, a little more money there, I could have done this. I could have done that. You know, that was the hardest thing about putting my own film together because it's, even though we, we put up X amount of dollars, you still, you, you, I wanted more to be able to do it, you know, on another tier, I guess, you know, that kind of thing. But it is, what it is. 
We've got about 2,000 people watching live right now. <laughs> okay. <laughs> well, I got to ask you, you, you say not only did you put up your own money, but you wrote, you directed, you edited. I assume yeah. you're the cinematographer. I mean, yeah. that, I mean, <laughs> do you like doing everything or? Uh, absolutely not. <laughs> absolutely <laughs> not. Um, you know, like I said, I've been in the business mostly as a cinematographer, but I've also spent many years as an editor. And and also as a colorist, so you know I had kind of the back the both 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 ends there, um, and I've directed like a lot directed a lot of commercials, a lot of high end commercials, that kind of thing, but never a feature film where I wore this many hats. And yeah, it was it was it was very challenging. I mean, luckily I had the experience to you know look you know I want this 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 and this. It wasn't like a panic mode. I never went into that you know, but uh, I would not do it again. I would uh, I would concentrate on one area that I could be my best at one area. Uh, unfortunately, we didn't have the budget to bring in a whole team of, you know, I, I had a good team, but not on the level that, you know, I was used to working with. But hey, you know, it is what it is. And the guys I did bring in were, were good at what they did, you know, um, so I, kudos to them. And it, so anyway, I would not do it again. No, I mean, <laughs> you know. I would imagine doing all the roles, basically, does that make you too close to the project? It does. It really does. Because so by the time I got to the editing process, nothing was good enough. You know, nothing. I, I would do a cut. I don't like it. I'd do another cut. All perfect. Two days later, I don't like it. It was a it was a struggle putting it together from an editor standpoint. So I wished next time I will let somebody else edit the film because it was just, you know, but I'm such a, I, I want to be a perfectionist, you know, and I want to say, well, I, I don't want to let it go to somebody else, but you know, I've got to next time. Um, so anyway, so, but uh, you learn, you, you live and learn, you know, we've got a lot of questions from our chat. Let's get to those starting from the top. Yes. Uh, believe in yourself member for five months. Uh, you guys continue to rock. eh? Let's be from Canada. Yes. Uh, let's see. Hey. From Rumble, <laughs> ADL is from Rumble. What motivated you to make this uh, make your feature film debut after your last two directorial efforts were shorts? Well, it was sometime the, the shorts that I've done uh, was several years ago. It was nothing recently on, on as far as the shorts go. Uh, well, after just uh, doing other people's film, I did three motion. I did three features last year for other people, and. And, and I, over the several over the past several years, I've done many features, and I just started scratching my head, you know, myself, going, "Wait a minute, this is I need to be doing this myself," you know, because I've always wanted to do my own feature film, and I said, "I need to be doing this myself." So this is how it got started, you know. I got some friends of mine together, I said, "Hey, let's throw this little story together. We've got the gear, we've got a few people we can pull in, let's just make it happen," you know. So that's really how it happened. You, you got to either do it or die, you know. I, I didn't want to, you know, leave this world with i wish i had so i just did it we just did it you know all right more from questions solomon, from solomon thorne uh, greeting sir ryan any advice for beginning filmmakers don't let anything hold you back i mean absolutely nothing people told me when i started years ago they said well you can't do this you can't do that there's so many negatives out there that people throw at you and i'm telling you just take those negatives let them bounce off of you and keep plowing ahead there's so many opportunities for anybody who wants to get in this business. You just got to now one thing you've just got to give it 110%. I have found so many people who wanted to be in a position, maybe such as myself as a cinematographer or, or editor or whatever. And there's so many people lacking the motivation and lacking the 110%, 120% it takes to get some to get to, you know, wherever position it is you think you want to get to, but it takes a lot. I mean, you've got to stay to it. you got to you know, put your nose to the, to the ground and, and, and don't give up. So many people give up too early. They really do, you know, and in competition, they just want to back off a little. I said competition in thrives me. I mean, it's like I get high off of competition, <laughs> you know, so, that's, so anyway, but don't give up. Don't never, ever, ever give up. All right. Well, Dennis Wright wants to know, is this a zombie film? No. No, it's got the look of a zombie film, but it doesn't. And that look came from my wife, who is a Walking Dead fanatic. So, and I said, well, I've got to draw the line somewhere. I don't want to do the zombie thing. You know, like we can make it look sort of that wasteland look, but I don't want to, you know, 
make it a zombie movie. One of the guys in uh, one of the guys in the film, um, he's uh, one of the one of the fighter guys, action guys. Um, he has uh, done a lot, a lot of Walking Dead as a uh, stunt fighter and stuff like that. So it was cool. He was cool working with him. Very good. All right, uh, Nerd Far Away. Uh, hey, I'm Mr. Johnson. What is your favorite part of making a movie? Now that you Walking did all the parts. Away. <laughs> <laughs> Walking away at the end. <laughs> I mean, not really. I mean, it's a relief when you walk away. Trust me. Uh, favorite part is probably the editing, even though I struggled because it was my own film. Uh, seeing it come together, seeing everything come together with the visuals and the music and uh, just, you know, the whole nine yards when it comes to just putting together the actual final product. I mean, that's what you start getting excited when you see the music and, you know, and the visuals and that kind of thing. All right. Uh, from rumble, uh, Alan, Alan Horkin asks, uh, as a cinematographer, do you think, uh, you have any advantages or disadvantages becoming a director? Well, it's a huge advantage because you know what you want. Uh, now obviously you got to know what you want in actors in your actresses. Uh, but, it's, I think the two go hand in hand in a lot of ways. Um, as a cinematographer, I work with a lot of directors. So, um, you know, when it comes time to, to direct, you, you definitely know the visual aspect of what you want. Um, then it's just finding that niche with working with your actors. Okay. Uh, Brock Samson Knight, uh, is this connected to the Purge franchise at all, or is it just a coincidence? This is just a coincidence. <laughs> Yeah, that would cost you a whole lot of money. Oh, uh, yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. Snake Euler, uh, Mr. Johnson, what or who were your influences or inspirations? Well, uh, growing up, growing up, listen to me, growing up, well, I guess growing up, uh, Spielberg was probably my number one because I always loved the epic uh, features that he does. And that's what I've always wanted to be like from my visual standpoint is the epic, uh, epic visuals. Um, I just, I just loved everything he did, you know. Um, so that's kind of today. Where I, if you notice, everything is sort of epic in this film. I want the epic. I want the epic backdrops. So, and had I had some more money, I could, it could have been three times what it was. So, but I'm happy. I've done what I've done. All I could do. So <laughs> at the end of the day, I walk away from it. Exactly. All right. Uh, from Razorburn, uh, how was it like working with Aerosmith? Were they nice people to work with? Wow, I'm surprised somebody found that out. Well, they must have dug deep. Um, that was a trip. It was a trip. Um, that was in Sony studios when it, uh, was now Sony studios back then. I think it was MGM or something. Yeah. MGM. Uh, we were shooting uh, the love of the elevator song. So I actually got, wow. uh, I got hired by a friend of my, a friend of mine did the set dressing on that and he pulled me in on it. Little, little did I know I was going to be in a couple, a few of the scenes in front of the elevator there. Uh, I'm, if you'll watch it, the video, it's me going back and forth doing some stupid dance with a denim jacket on. <laughs> from the 1980s. So yeah, we it, that went on for about 20 hour shoot. I mean, it was a, it was wow. a long shoot. Yeah, but great craft service. <laughs> <laughs> Steven Tyler was great to work with. He was awesome. Oh yeah, I need to look that one up again. Uh, Professor Fear Brian, you lived in Burbank and you were a cinematographer and editor. Do you feel you need to live in the LA area to be successful in filmmaking these days? Absolutely not. Absolutely not. You can be a successful filmmaker anywhere you want to be, especially now, you know, you know in, the, in the day and age uh, of the technical or the technology we have now. Uh, no, absolutely not. You can make it anywhere. And I, I, have, a I have a final question. Is yes. the film, how do you see the film? How do you see the movie? How do I see it in what terms? Like, uh, is it on VOD now or coming to oh, VOD? Oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I thought you had my <laughs> Population <laughs> purge. Maybe glasses or with... Uh, well, I see it getting my money back. Like I'm making my money back. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, it's on uh, Amazon Prime. It's on um, Fandango or Vudu. Uh, and uh, it's on all the cable video on demand. Uh, and if you go to populationpurge.com, it's got a list of all the the places that you can see the actual film. It, uh, they're on the home page. Uh, so, and it'll be there for, they said three months or whatever. And then after that, it'll drop off to like uh, your tubies and stuff like that. There's, so there is a website. 
Yeah. Uh, uh, yeah. All right. Great. Uh, well, first of all, thank you for being on the show today. Uh, congratulations on the movie. Just getting it made is yeah. one thing. Getting it made and released is a right. whole other challenge, as I'm sure you found out. And that's that's another thing, because, see, all my life, I've always, you know, been involved with the production process up until the final up until post-production. Well, see, now I had to learn the whole business end of it. And and I'm telling you, it was a process. I mean, months and months of the business aspect of everything. Uh, so, uh, you know, now I'm like I'm, I'm primed now for the next feature to take it all the way through to the you know distribution. So now I know how the whole process works and, the, and and what you have to do and not do and you know negotiate and everything else so to get it out there so well congratulations uh again see the movie now on vod amazon i've got amazon so that'll work brian thank you for being on yeah, the show thank you, thank you.